In May 1925, when China was still ruled by warlords, students in Shanghai, with the support of the Kuomintang, the now dead Sun Yat-sen's party, demonstrated against foreign influence at the international settlement. The British-controlled police opened fire on them, killing many, sparking outrage throughout the country, bolstering the ranks of the KMT. Relying on this and Soviet support, Chiang Kai-shek first purged extremist elements, then finally launched the Northern Expedition in July 1926 with the aim of uniting the country and ending the warlord era. He faced three major coalitions. These were the two halves of the Zhili clique that controlled the central regions and the even more powerful Fengtian clique up north in Manchuria. There was also the Guomin which was sympathetic to the KMT and other potential allies, but for now, Chang's forces were significantly outnumbered. Nonetheless, after initial border clashes, KMT forces entered Hunan province and took it by the end of August, following the advice of Soviet advisors Mikhail Borodin and Vasily Blucher. The warlords were busy waging their own war around Beijing, and they were also suspicious of each other, which the KMT exploited. Wu Chang was surrounded, and in September, the other half of the Zhili clique was attacked. Jiangxi province was conquered, but reinforcements pushed back the KMT units. In October, the Canton-Hong Kong strike ended, restoring Chang's supply lines, so his National Revolutionary Army, the military branch of the KMT, could resume the attack. Wu Chang surrendered to the NRA, while a defecting warlord general tried to take Shanghai but failed. He was executed by the warlord army, along with thousands of civilians. Fujian province was then also attacked. The locals welcomed the NRA, but the warlords organized a new alliance and created the National Pacification Army, NPA, to stop Chang. However, they were now very unpopular. More and more troops and generals defected to the NRA with their weapons. Fighting continued until January, when Chang scored a major victory, demoralizing the warlord army and capturing much-needed supplies. After seven months, the NRA now controlled seven provinces and had more than 700,000 soldiers. The Fengtian clique sent more troops to help defend Shanghai, but some Zhili forces and their navy defected to the NRA, which approached the city from two directions. A communist general strike broke out in the city, it then fell in late March, followed by Nanjing, which was captured without opposition. Massive anti-foreigner protests started in the city, an American and a British destroyer arrived to evacuate their citizens before the riots were suppressed. Anhui and Jiangsu provinces were captured next, but the campaign had to be stopped due to an increasing rift between the left and right wing of the Kuomintang. The first united front between the communists and nationalists was breaking down, with one center in the newly merged city of Wuhan and another in Nanjing. At the same time, the reorganized warlord armies recaptured most of the lost territory north of the Yangtze River. Wang Jingwei, Chang's former rival for the KMT's leadership, returned from his European exile and agreed to share power with Chang in Nanjing, which was elevated to capital of China. He was sent to Wuhan to take over the leftist faction, while in Shanghai, a massacre of communists took place without his knowledge. He condemned Chang's actions, but instead of turning on each other, the two factions started their own campaigns in May, taking Henan and the rest of Jiangsu province. The Guomin aided both campaigns, but its leaders sided with Chang's right-wing government in Nanjing and purged communists in his own territory, so the Wuhan faction retreated to its capital. The campaign stalled once again, 
as the leftist Wuhan faction planned an attack on Nanjing, but they soon started talks with Chang in order to focus on the re-emerging threat from the warlords. They also purged communists within their ranks, but this provoked a communist uprising in Nanchang further to the south. In order to facilitate reconciliation, Chang agreed to Wang's demand and resigned as commander-in-chief. The campaign thus lost its leader, but both factions of the KMT worked together, along with the Guomenjun, to defend Nanjing. In a costly battle, where 10,000 men died, the nationalists were victorious, the remaining warlord troops surrendered. Following that, in September, the Wuhan government dissolved and joined the Nanjing government, except for Wang, while his former military commander became a warlord, so he had to be defeated in October before the campaign could be resumed. There was one good news, as the warlord of Shanxi province sided with the KMT, adding another 100,000 troops to their existing forces and increasing the pressure on the remaining warlords. In November, combined forces of the NRA and the Guomenjun started moving into Shandong province, continuing the expedition. The next month, a communist uprising broke out down south in Guangzhou, after which Chang proposed the ending of all relations with the Soviet Union. The Nanjing government accepted this, the now suspicious Wang was once again pushed out and fled to Europe, so Chang had no more rivals left, and he returned as commander-in-chief in January 1928. Since the cold winter prevented major offensives, Chang used this time to consolidate his position and reorganize the NRA into four collective armies. The first had his original forces, the second consisted of Guomingjong troops, the third of Shanxi forces, while the fourth was based on the Guangxi clique's army. They now had one million soldiers preparing for the next attack. In early April, second and third armies attacked Shandong province from the west, while first army advanced from the south. After initial gains, a major counterattack had to be stopped, but following that, the warlord army disintegrated. The provincial capital, Jinan, was surrounded, but by that time, 2,000 Japanese troops had arrived there to protect the Japanese civilians. An agreement was concluded regarding their departure, but fighting broke out, during which Chinese diplomats and more than 5,000 civilians were killed by them. To avoid more confrontation with the Japanese, NRA troops went around Jinan and continued their march towards Beijing with three armies. In May, they had to stop a 200,000 strong counter-attack by the Fengtian clique. This they did, but further complications arose in June, when the Japanese threatened with intervention in Manchuria should the fighting reach this important region. Zhang Zuolin, leader of the Fengtian clique, who was tired of his pro-Japanese image, sent a harsh reply, explaining that he did not recognize Japanese interest in Manchuria. He then decided to retreat to Manchuria by train, but in early June, his train mysteriously exploded and he was killed. His son, Zhang Shuiliang, succeeded him as head of the Fengtian clique, but after the other generals gave up Beijing and Tianjin, he proposed an armistice in July. The only remaining warlord force, the Shandong Zhili Army, which still had 70,000 soldiers, among them white Russian mercenaries, attacked the Fengtian clique, but they were trapped by combined KMT and Fengtian troops, after which most of them defected. The campaign was over, but unification was still far away, as the victorious allies had different interests. Before the end of July, Chang and the leaders of the four collective armies met in Beijing to discuss the mobilization of the now 2.2 million strong military and the question of centralization. Although the KMT had united China on paper, through centralization of financial and military matters, 
would only happen if its warlord allies gave up their own privileges. The peacetime Nanjing government was launched in October, on the 17th anniversary of the 1911 revolution, but the country remained divided between five major realms. These were the Nanjing KMT, the Guangxi clique, the Guomingzhun, the Shanxi, and Manchuria, which was a quasi-independent state, after Zhang Shuoyang declared his allegiance to the nationalist government in December. Soon, a new conflict would break out between Chang and his allies, which will be the topic of the next episode, along with the Nanjing Decade, until the Japanese invasion. See you then!